Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lindsay and it's Christmas season and that means it's Advent calendar time. <laughs> now, I didn't just want any old Advent calendar. No, no Lego minifigures this year. But I did want to find something that was fun and a little exciting and who knows what will happen. So, I found this little gem at my local comic book store. It's an Escape the Game Advent Calendar. Oh, I'm so excited because it's an escape room game that is based around escaping a mystery ice cake. I can't wait to dive into this. I am slightly nervous because it is a level two and you know I haven't done this before so the formal name of this is the mystery of the ice cave and there are 24 exciting riddles inside this box and I can't wait. Now in this video I'm kind of just introducing this concept and the story because in the storybook you read a little blurb every day. And to set up the story, they have included a prologue of which I wanted to read so that you could be familiar with what's going on. And then each day, I'm not gonna read this one, but each day it has what you're supposed to do on that day. So without further ado, let's dive into the prologue. You take a few last steps through a deep powder snow and turn around. Your gaze wanders over the snow-covered valley. Down there in that tiny town, people are probably already decorating their homes for Christmas. You take a few deep breaths and the cold air burns in your lungs. Mm, I'm already feeling chilly, how about you? Already strained from the climb, but at least there is air, clear and pure. No comparison to the city air that you, unlike your friends, left behind you. Your friends only seem bothered about Christmas this and Christmas that. Not the only ones either given how deserted the ski lifts and slopes seem to be. Ooh, so it seems like you and some friends are at a ski lodge. Hmm. You quietly celebrate your decision to take a spontaneous skiing holiday alone. It's wonderful, serene up here. You look around and finally find the trail markers that will lead you to the best ski run in the area. You leave the beautiful panorama behind and follow the signpost over the next hill. Ooh, so you're by yourself. Ooh, that doesn't seem very safe <laughs> to go on a ski trip up a mountain by yourself. As you strap your skis under your boots, it suddenly becomes strangely dark. Deep gray clouds have gathered over you and threatened to block out the daylight. Thankfully, the snow still reflects enough light to continue, but you will need to step up a gear if you want to really enjoy the descent. Okay, you're alone, you're on a mountain, and it's dark. What are you thinking? I need to know more, but I'm like, I would not be in this scenario. All right, back to the story. As you begin to ski in earnest, thick snowflakes begin to fall. This doesn't improve your view, but there is still nothing to worry about. Your skis slide rhythmically over the top snow and you enjoy the solitude. Okay, you're skiing, you're alone, but you're skiing and it's exciting. You're enjoying the alone time. I get it. On the slope ahead, you spot a long metal and protruding from the snow. You slow down and stop. Is this still a slope marker? 
the flakes are falling more and more densely and you're beginning to find it difficult to orientate yourself. Uh-oh. A little further along, you see a second steel pole. It is not necessary, the usually kind of marker, but after all, this is not a busy run. You continue on down the slope more cautiously. Hmm. As you ski, you notice more and more bare rocks around you. This can't be right, can it? Your path leads alongside high rock faces and dangerous looking abysses. Huh? There's rocks that don't have snow on them and there are large abysses. It, this does not at all seem like this is going to go well. I mean, it obviously isn't going to go well, but really? Did the metal marker lead you in the right direction? You decide to take a short break. After all, the situation can only be improved with a snack. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's dark, it's snowing really hard, there's crazy rocks and abysses, but let's stop for a snack. Sounds good to me. And a chance to sit down and plan in peace how to safely return to the main run. Searching, you let your gaze wander over the slopes. Suddenly, something cracks loudly behind you. You turn around, but all you can see is snow and rock. Then you hear a deep rumble. The mountain seems to tremble and your skis start to vibrate. Okay, this isn't good. The snow begins to move under your feet and the sliver of panic seizes you. An avalanche, your heart is racing, your mind screams over and over, damn, 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 help, help, help. But your body instinctively knows what to do and takes control. You lean over your skis and head in the same direction as the tumbling snow. Behind you, the white mass thunders down. Now all you can think about is not getting buried in it. The snow seems to be forcing you directly toward a sheer rock wall and your mind clicks into gear. But what is it? Is that a hole in the rock? Do you feel a glimmer of hope and twisting your body around with all your might? You can dive into the alcove and feel the push of snow forcing you deeper inside. Then the wall turns black before your eyes. Whoa, this does not seem like it's gonna go well. A little later, you awaken. Uh-oh, you got knocked out. That's not good. And you find yourself on an icy rock floor. You're half covered in rubble and snow, but you can move. You struggle to catch your breath as you stomp free and warily straighten yourself upright. It takes a while for your body to stop shaking and a few tears run down your cheeks. That was close. You can't believe that you survived. Um, I'm kind of shocked that this person survived. I don't think I would. The rumbling outside has now stopped. Instead, there's an eerie silence. You hastily throw off your skis, sticks, and ski mask. You grab your mobile phone. Of course, you have your cell phone with you. From the inside pocket of your jacket, but there's no reception. Of course not. It's an emergency and there's no reception. And you don't have a transmitter. Of course not, because why would you bring that with you? You test whether you can make a hole through the snow with your ski poles, but you quickly come across ice sheets and rubble. You won't get any further here. Somehow you have to get out of this place. By the time you are missed and someone finds you here, an avalanche, you will have long since starved to death. Well, yeah, okay. You turn away from the buried entrance with icy fingers and you turn on your mobile phone torch 
and shine it in all directions. Okay, so you're using your flashlight. Probably a good plan. What you thought was a niche in the rock seems more like a corridor. You trace your fingertips along the walls and they are particularly smooth and even. A few meters in front of you, the passage opens to a larger cave. The light of your torch doesn't go very far and the stalagmites and stalactites throw shadows across the cave. You slowly regain your optimism. <laughs> There's optimism to be had in this situation. If there is an entrance, well, there must be an exit. You decide to explore the cave as systematically as possible and start to move forward. Small stones continue to crunch under your bulky ski boots. You keep your torch shining into the darkness. There are a few meters in front of you. You see something glistening. But what? Ooh, intriguing. You move away from the wall to take a closer look. The nearer you get, the more sure you are that that is ice. But not just a simple block of ice, no. It almost looks like a figure. As if someone tried to make a bear out of ice. What a strange place for an ice sculpture. I agree. This is a weird cave in the middle of nowhere and there's a sculpture of a bear in it. Hmm. From your new location, you look around and discover even more of these ice forms. Incredible. Many look like mountain animals, while others appear to be more mystical creatures. Okay. The further you go inside the cave, the larger and more detailed the figures get. Wild theories run through your head. Was there once an exhibition here? But this would be a very strange place for it. Perhaps an eccentric artist stores their sculptures in this cave. What is far more important is that there is someone has already been to this cave before you. So it is quite possible that there is another exit here too. It is a bit scary, however, to be observed by the silent eyes of ice and you want to hurry to the other end of the cave. Just then, you kick something and a metallic clink sounds in the stillness. You shine the torch downward and discover a rusty carabiner, which you must have caught with your shoe. Not far away is a frayed rope. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound very good. It sounds like maybe somebody was climbing and had a rough go. Perhaps these are leftovers from transporting the ice sculptures. You let your gaze wander and find more surprising things. Two pickaxes, a dusty box full of tattered ropes, and an old tin can containing rusty nails. Finally, you discover a rag bag of helmets. Slowly, a new idea comes to you. Might an expedition to this cave have taken place in the past. Next to all of the junk lies a new surprise. Gigantic mountain boots. A look at the shoe sole tells you size 18. Okay, basketball player. They're definitely the biggest boots you've ever seen. In any case, they are not an alternative to your ski boots, and you put them back again. But the boots look pretty new, and somebody must have left them there. You shine the light more thoroughly around you and discover more of these ice sculptures. You're particularly impressed by the extremely detailed life-size bear figure. 
Behind the stands, a huge eagle, and further back are two monk-like ice figures that flank a flight of stairs. Oh, there's stairs in the cave. <laughs> of course there are. Your eyes slide back to, wait a minute, a staircase? Oh, okay, now they're realizing maybe the staircase is a little weird. You quickly rush towards it. You weren't mistaken that two identical ice figures actually stand on a staircase carved into the rock. With shaky knees, you begin to climb the stairs. After a few meters, you notice a light in the distance. Is anyone here? As glad as you would be to find help, it occurs to you that the inhabitants must be pretty odd to live in such a crazy house. And what would they eat? Hopefully not skiers. Now that some light is shimmering in the distance, you turn off your torch to adjust your eyes to the darkness. You try to be quiet as possible. After all, you never know what might be ahead of you. But the faint shimmer magically attracts you and you continue to climb the stairs toward a doorway. The first riddle begins on the calendar sheet December 1st. Oh, there's also an illustration. All right, I'm intrigued. We have found an ice cave. We're climbing stairs that happen to be inside of it. There's a mysterious light. What is going to happen? Well, my friends, you're going to have to stay tuned and watch the next video to find out what happens and how, I guess me, I get to be the uh, really smart skier, gets out of this situation. So stay tuned tomorrow for day one, December 1st, and find out how the plot begins. I will catch you on the next one. As always, have courage, be kind, especially to yourself. Santa Claus pulled up, come get the loot. You better than watch him, what you do. None of that list you got to go, go through.